One of the best ways to get information out about what Robin Hood was doing was via social channels. Um, a lot of new organizations formed after the hurricane, so volunteer groups came together, citizens came together and formed these ad hoc committees to help. And um, they came to our Facebook pages, they came to our Twitter accounts to really learn how they could get funding. Um, and we had a great success with the 12-12-12 concert which benefited Hurricane Sandy and that was a huge media moment. But for months afterwards, we were handing out grants and doing work, and to keep that story alive, we realized, really relied on our uh, digital channels. Instagram and Vine are really exciting to me. I enjoy them a lot. Um, and other than being sort of new applications and new mediums, I think what's interesting is they give a real-time view at what the organization is doing. So never before have you been able to really see what work is happening on the ground and Vine and Instagram can do that and facilitate that really well. So I think as long as an organization's uh, showcasing something that aligns with their mission, it's often a really great way to storytell around their work. For Robin, the main thing is to really think about how we're going to tell a story and then what digital channel will help tell that story the best. Um, we're, you know, really Robin Hood's primary concern isn't fundraising like a lot of other organizations. We really want to get people aware about our mission and, and then our approach. And we have a very specific approach where, you know, 100% of our donations, or every donation goes straight to the programs that we fund because our board pays for all the administrative overhead. Um, we use a system of metrics to sort of forecast the impact that we think our grants can make. Um, and, and those elements, if we can bring them out more and more through social channels and digital channels, that's, that's what is the primary um, goal and strategy behind how we use them. Yeah, so I think the two that I'm trying to focus on the most right now are LinkedIn and Google+. Uh, Google Plus is still kind of interesting. It's a great place to experiment. Um, and a lot of the followers we have in Google Plus aren't necessarily people who are donors or even live in New York City. So often it's about getting non-donors and non our non-target audience involved with our mission. So that's why Google Plus is really interesting to me. The other thing is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I think, is sort of a, a new channel that people don't really expect to be social. But when they're looking for information about an organization or company, it's great if the organization can present some sort of detail and some sort of color to um, a company profile page. And, and the LinkedIn social is a great way to do that. I love Instagram right now because I think it's so personal and intimate. So I think, you know, if if a follower has us in their feed, it's like we're alongside their friend's photos, and I think that's really lovely. But in terms of real bang for their buck, I mean, there's so many free social tools out there. And um, in terms of digital applications, I have to say analytics, because if you're looking at analytics, it's a really sort of uh, important guidepost to where you should put your time and energy. Um, just even web page analytics are a great indicator of you know what people are looking for and what they want to see. Um, and as well as like Facebook Insights, it's really great to just take some time, look back at what's popular and who's looking at it. I think that's really important. I, I do think this is a tough question, but the fact is is that digital tools are often free. And I think for every organization, there has to be some sort of digital presence because these days, digital presence means authenticity and transparency. So no matter if it's just a free Tumblr account or if it's a free um, blog site, they need to have some sort of presence online because that's probably the first way people are going to interact with them. Um, I often think of a website or an online presence as sort of the doormat to a lot of organizations and a lot of businesses. Like when I want to go out and eat at a restaurant, the first thing I do is look them up online. So same with the same with who I'm giving to. I would sort of say they're missing the boat, and I'd say that they're missing out on really communicating to a, a community of people that could turn out to be really loyal and. Um, one of the things about online tools, it's a great way to foster relationships, and I think that's probably one of the primary things that most nonprofits need to do. They need to foster relationships with their most loyal supporters and donors, and doing it online is 
a lot less intensive and a lot less um, cost prohibitive than doing it in other ways.